All right, so what we need to do now is we've just installed the Google Analytics plugin by Yoast. In order for that to work, it needs to connect with our Google Analytics account. So we're going to go through to set that up. Uh, and this is, again, free. And this will give us a bunch of uh, data and statistics on our site. Now, let me get a show of hands here. How many of you ha currently have a Gmail account? So most of you, good. So this will go quickly. If you don't, that's OK. We can create one for free, of course. Google has a variety of services. They've got Gmail. They've got YouTube. They've got Google Earth. They've got Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools. So if you've already got a Gmail account, all we need to do is turn on Google Analytics. Now, my screen is going to look a little bit different than yours because I've already set mine up. And I'm not going to set up one. I'm not going to set up a new one, but it'll make sense in a moment. Go ahead and uh, you can open another window or another tab. And let's go to the address google.com slash. Uh, we will do first Google Webmasters tools. So google.com slash webmasters or web. Is it webmaster or masters? Yeah, webmasters. If you type it without the S, it'll still work. But there's two things here. Webmaster Tools and Analytics. Webmaster Tools is Google's free service that will tell you, again, is your site, can Google see your site? Is there a problem with your site? Does your site have, you know, adware or spam or whatever? So this is more just to check the health of your site. And again, it's free. Then we'll look at Google Analytics which will show you all of these statistics. So here under google.com slash webmasters, it's saying, OK, sign in. Go ahead and click Sign into Webmaster Tools. And it's going to say Log in with your Gmail account. So go ahead and do so. If you don't have a Gmail account, you can go through the process, the easy process of create an account. So go ahead and log in. So log into your Gmail account here. And as I said, my screen will look a little different than yours. So I'll look over someone's shoulder just to see what it looks like. Mine, because it's already been set up, it's going to give a variety of uh, websites that I've already created. Yours is going to give you a little video with a website holding a wrench. And below it, or to the left of it, or something, it's going to say, add a site. And then a red button. Is that what that says, add a site? Mm -hmm. All right, so type in the address to your website right there. Type in your address and then click the Add Site button. So what, we're, what we need to do is, just because we type the name of our site doesn't mean it's fully set up, because we need to verify that that's our site. So think about this. If, I, if someone were to say or ask me, where do you live? I say, well, I live in that big mansion in La Jolla. Now, they wouldn't believe me until I unlock the door to that mansion and walk in, because I can prove that it's my house if I have the key to it, right? So here, I need to, we need to verify that the site that we're connecting to Google and Webmaster Tools and Analytics is our site. So there's a couple of, there's like three ways to do it. I'll tell you the best way in just a moment. Here it's saying recommended method, and that's the way that I don't recommend, actually. Recommended method is going to have you basically log into GoDaddy and, and confirm your site through GoDaddy. I've found that that's way more trouble than it's worth. 
So if yours says recommended method with GoDaddy, don't worry about it, don't do it. If yours says something else there, again, don't worry, let's look instead at alternate methods. So you have recommended and alternate, and you've got HTML file upload. We can upload a file to our site and then verify. That's one way, but a much easier way is here under HTML tag. If you click on HTML tag, it says, okay, just copy that one line of code into your site, and I'll show you exactly where in a moment. But go ahead and select HTML tag, select that line of code, and right-click and copy, or just Control-C and copy. We'll go back to your WordPress site and go to go to tools available tools so on your menu there available tools under tools and you should see a little box there google webmaster tools it's saying copy that tech that code and paste it into this box paste it. At the bottom of the screen, select Save. Okay, one at a time. Let me just finish what I was doing and then I'll, I'll show you guys. Uh, so I'm going to paste it into this screen here and then I'm going to go back to Webmaster Tools and click Verify. And then I'll say, it'll say Congratulations. So if you're having any problems, let's Oh, that will work. Check how to do it and 
first of all, the quest in the morning is so tenuous. And uh, um, once that's so clear, we have to tell us all the exact. Uh, that's when you must be there. Now the cool thing about this is once we set it up one time, it'll work. But if you know if we can't set it up the first time, we have a little problem. Remember, I'm recording all of this, so you can always re review it. But it's if we work out all the kinks. Perfect. So go over here to alternate methods, select HTML tag, and just copy that line of code. And now we're back to your site. All right, so not super complicated, but it needed a couple of little setup steps, right? For most of us, we had this screen here of, uh, ver of Site Verify, and that's coming from Jetpack. That's another thing that Jetpack gives us. You, if you notice, you don't have to do this, but if you go to SEO dashboard, it also has a spot here where you can plug it in. You don't have to do it for both, either Jetpack or or Yoast SEO. They've both got a, a spot there, so uh, just for your information. But the Jetpack one here says, okay, verify your site with Google, and then verify with Bing. We'll do that later. And also verify with Pinterest, if you decide to use the Pinterest social network. So if, I, if I'm back here on the congratulations screen, click continue. And that takes us to a screen here. Mine looks a little different because my screen is smaller, but you've got three columns, and it's going to say current status, uh, crawl errors, search queries, and sitemaps. So crawl errors, this is going to tell you in the last 90 days, any broken links, any um, you know missing files, if the site is broken, you know, it's going to tell you that information and how to, how to deal with it. In the center, it's going to tell me search queries, which are what, are what are the keywords that people are typing when they find my site, and better yet, when they actually click that keyword to go to my site. For clients, you know, we've got all of this set up for our clients. We review this on a monthly basis, and we have a spreadsheet that's keeping track of this stuff, and we see this keyword now is hotter than it was last month. Therefore, we should tweet about that keyword more often. That's then going to spread that keyword out to the rest of the world, to our followers and friends of friends and so forth, and that'll help us, that'll help our SEO. Again, I'll talk about that in detail, but we've got to get all of this foundation set up in order for it to make sense and to work. Sitemaps, we'll set that up uh, in a moment, I think. Sitemaps is also very useful because this is how we can tell Google and Bing 
everything about our site. There's millions, there's billions of websites out there. And eventually Google would have found your site by browsing all over the world. Here we've made Google and later Bing aware of our site much faster just by setting up this connection. And then we'll have Google and Bing know everything about our website with a sitemap. Because let's say you go to a mall, a brand new mall you've never been to in another city or whatever. You go to a brand new mall and you want to find a specific store. How many of you are going to wander around the store until you eventually find the one you're looking for? As opposed to how many of you are going to go to the store directory, the mall directory, and find the right store and walk to it because you know where it's at. More people are going to go to the, the mall map, find your store, and go to your store. That's basically what a site map is for our website, a list of all of our pages, all of our pictures, everything about our website. So when someone searches pecan pie recipes, and Google says, oh, we've got a website here that says pecan pie recipes, your site could appear on search. To fully set up the sitemap, that's also why we've got the Yoast, um, the Yoast uh, SEO plugin, because this sitemap is not just a simple text file that has a list of all of our pages. It's a special text file written in XML, which I don't know what XML is, but Google, uh, but Yoast uh, SEO plugin does. Let's go back to our site. Let's hover over SEO and look at that. XML sitemap. So hover over SEO, XML sitemap, and click on that. And it tells you right here, check this box to enable XML sitemap functionality. It's on by default. It should be on. If it's not, turn it on and then click Save. And it says, here's your sitemap. Click on it. XML sitemap, just to get a little preview of it. Uh, okay, actually, mine says not found. Did any one of yours say not found? No. Okay, if yours says not found like mine, usually it works for me to turn it off and save it. And then turn it on and save it. question? Yeah, you want to go first of all back up here to your SEO menu, XML sitemap, and then you want to turn off the very first item here. Check this box. Turn it off and save. And then when it saves, turn it back on and save it again. The point of that is we're kind of waking up the, the sitemap. To confirm that it worked, click on the button that says XML sitemap. And you should see something that looks like that. It's just, this is a list of all of the things on your site. Every post, every page, every, every category, every tag. Notice my address. victorsart.info slash sitemap underscore index XML index.xml. Yours is going to be something very similar, right? johnsdesigns.com slash sitemap underscore index. I need to copy that address into Webmaster Tools where I'm going to show you in a moment. But just to confirm before we do that, does everyone see their sitemap? Okay, so if you see your sitemap, copy your address, your URL up there. Copy that address. Copy that. So at the top of that address bar, you want to copy it. And then we'll go to Webmaster Tools. Notice mine is saying here, yours is saying no sitemap. Sitemap, there's no sitemap. So click on it. Add a sitemap. Yeah, although, oh, I notice if we paste it, it pastes too much. Do you notice that? It's already assuming that it's the name of your address and then just the sitemap file. And when we copied and pasted, it gave you the whole address and the sitemap file. So 
just delete that so that it only shows the part at the end, sitemap index XML. Because it's already assuming it's your website. So click Submit. It says Sitemap Submit. Yeah, click that Refresh button. So what the screen will show us, mine says pending, and what it's doing is Google is going to spend some amount of time, I don't know, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one day, depending on the complexity on your site, it's going to follow that sitemap, every link, every page, every picture, and keep a record of it in its index. So mine's going to be processing, at a certain point it'll be ready, and then Google will know everything about my site. So when someone searches, they could possibly find my site. The cool thing about this is that, is that the Yoast uh, plugin, if I add a new blog post, that'll be added to the sitemap, and then Yoast will automatically tell Google, hey, there's a new page on their site. And so Google will check your sitemap and add that new page to its search engine. So that's automatic. You can tell it here also back on the Yoast plugin. Also do this for Yahoo or also do this for Ask. You don't need to do that because Yahoo is now connected with Bing. So if we set ourselves up with Bing, it will automatically then trickle down to Yahoo. Yahoo's search results now come from Bing, actually. And ask.com, that's not really a relevant search engine anymore. So you could turn this on, no problem, and then it'll connect itself with Ask, and if, you, if anyone goes to it, then you'll get a result there. But I'm finding nowadays Ask is terrible. People are just, just asking so many weird questions and so much spam and so forth. Yeah. I don't even take Ask.com seriously anymore. But the point is now we're setting up our Webmaster Tools. We've verified our site with Webmaster Tools. We've set up our sitemap. When we come back next week, we'll, we'll log into this again, and we'll probably start getting statistics. And if not next week, well, in two weeks or next month or so forth. And based on those statistics, we'll be able to make informed decisions about how to further optimize our site. So make a note, google.com slash webmasters. That's where we set this up. That was Webmaster Tools. We'll set up analytics in just a moment. Any general questions about, anal uh, about Webmaster Tools? Now, obviously, we didn't start to talk about this early on in the class because we didn't have a WordPress site. We didn't have experience on creating pages and posts and themes and whatever. So we're talking about this now because now we have a site. This is not going to work very well on your WordPress.com site. You really need your own self-hosted WordPress. That's why we set that up last week, and now we're talking about plugins and these webmaster tools. Up on the address bar here, you can open another tab, and let's go to google.com slash analytics. Let's set up analytics. Google.com slash analytics. A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S. Google.com slash analytics. When that loads up, it'll tell you, well, what's the point of this? Uh, it's all about gathering data for your site. So at the very top right corner, select Access Google Analytics. So click Access Google Analytics at the top right. Now, mine's going to look different again because I've used my account before, but all of you guys are seeing three main icons, a little pencil 
and then a little blue thing and whatever. So you should see on the right side, what does that button say right there on the right side? Sign up. Okay, click sign up. Very, uh, yes, it'll be part of the. Yeah, so click. Yes, you've got it. So click that sign up, and then it pops up to say, let me make my screen look like yours, but it's going to, ask, there we go. It's going to ask you some things. Uh, let me explain what it's asking you. First of all, it says, would you like to track the data on your website or your mobile app? Well, this is a website. It's not an app, so leave it on website. Then it's going to ask you two weird questions, account name and website name. The difference between that is this. Look at my account here that's already set up. I have these different folders with different clients. And then in each of these clients, I can, I can track their YouTube, their main website. I can track their, their store, their blog. So what it's asking you, it's asking for create an account, which is basically the folder where you're going to track more than one property or website, YouTube, Etsy, whatever. So do you see that's what it's asking here? Create an account. So here type just the name of your company. Maybe it's the same as your website, but I'm going to type it like this. Victor's Art. Like a real, you know, real spelling. Because from my Victor's Art, I'm going to have a website and maybe a YouTube and maybe a blog, and I want to track all of those. And those are going to be the property. Set up your property. The name of the website. I'll call it main website. Because here I could type the YouTube page, you know, whatever I'm tracking about Victor's art. This is going to be main website. But when you write the account name, it's, it's without the dot com? Exactly. Name. You can write it with the dot com, but it's whatever because again look at look what I've got up here notice these are all account names some of them I just have the name some of them I have the dot com doesn't matter it's just that this is the name these are the account names we're writing website main website here and now type in the address of your of your site so uh, actually we'll have to do this twice one for www, the name of your website. And then after we do this one in a moment, we have to do it again. And then for the non www, because this will actually track your data for both. Someone might type www, the name of your website, and someone will not type it. This will keep track of both. So for the moment, I'm going to start off with the www version. So type in your, your web address here with www. Choose an industry. There's not that many, but see which one fits into yours. So I'm doing victorsart.info. I'm going to say that's... Hmm, what would that be? And the purpose of my site is I'm going to sell my, my drawings. So what would that fit? Maybe shopping, kind of? No, arts and entertainment. That's where I'll put mine. If you put it in the wrong one, there's really no wrong one. This is just to show you your data, because this will collect a lot of data. Kind of overwhelming. If you select the appropriate industry, it'll show you your most appropriate data. And you can change this later if you pick the wrong one. But there's no wrong one, really. Confirm your time zone, US Pacific time. All of these check marks here, uh, this is uh, it's going to collect a lot of data and it's asking how would you like Google to share your data or if not. So for example, share your data with other Google products. That might be okay because I might want to connect this with other accounts. That's okay. Anonymously with Google's and others? That one maybe not because it's going to share your data with other non-Google companies even though they'll be anonymous, however anonymous that is, perhaps turn it off. If you're going to talk to technical support, 
you might want them to access your, your site, but from what I understand, you can turn this off and they'll still be able to help you because they won't need to look at the data collected. They, they can still help you with like if it's set up wrong and so forth. And an account specialist is basically someone that's going to try to maybe get you to buy something Google related, like AdWords or whatever. So really the only one you really need is the with other Google products. You'll be able to connect up to a hundred websites to your Google Analytics. So click Get Tracking ID. Uh, you wanna, you also wanna look at that maybe at some point and then agree to that. Accept it. If you don't accept it, you can't use it. So then you'll get to the screen. This is how you verify your site. We verified it, remember, by copying and pasting one line of code in Webmaster Tools. We'll do something very similar here for Google Analytics. Oh, yeah, question. Just on the website, or on the Yes. Okay. We're going to need to do both. First we'll do the WW version, and then we'll do this again without the WW. So that it gives us all of our data. So eventually here in our tracking info, now we're going to need to copy all of this code here. Notice it says script, blah, 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 slash script. All of this code here, we're going to copy it into our site, and I'll show you exactly where. And then what this will be doing is it will, it will collect all of the data that when someone visits your website, it'll, it'll collect the data. Where did that person come from? What site did they come from? What keyword did they type? How long did they stay on your site? They went from this page and then they went to that page. You know, lots of data. We need to set it up first. So, uh, oh, actually, we don't need to copy it because we've got the plugin. What this is saying is, this is your tracking code. Copy and paste this into every page you want to track. So if I were making a Dreamweaver page, I would copy this code and paste it into my index.html, my about.html, my contact.html. I would copy it manually to every page. But we're using a plugin, so we, we don't have to do that. We do it like this. Stay on this page here, but go back to your WordPress. Go up to your Yoast Analytics and select Settings. So back here on WordPress, you hover over Analytics and select Settings. The very first thing it says, right here, Authenticate with your Google account. So click on that. So right here, it's going to see you're logged into Google Analytics, hopefully. It's going to say, would you like to make a connection between your website and your analytics? I'm going to say accept. You should move this window over to the edge a little bit because now it says, okay, copy this code that Google is giving us and paste it back into your Yoast plugin and click save. And that'll verify. So copy that line of code. I'm going to go back here to my website plugin, paste, and save. It brings us back to this screen here. And it says select a profile. Click on that. Like I said, I work with a bunch of clients, so mine is full of people's websites. Yours has only got one, most likely. So you want to look around there to find the name of your site. Uh, where is it? Yeah, just one. Exactly. Click on that one. Main website. Mine is. Got too many websites. That's the one that says all website now. Mm hmm. Uh, 
yeah okay so yours says uh, main website all website data so click on that one all website data uh, and then at the bottom uh, click save changes So now we've made a connection from our website to our Google Analytics. If you go back to Google Analytics, um, try to refresh your screen. There's no button that says verify. I would uh, just refresh the screen or reload the screen. And uh, you may get a, on your screen, it may be a little bit different. If you have a gray box um, that says, I think it says like it might take up to 30 minutes to make the connection or something like that in that gray box on Google Analytics. So it's not going to give you data right away. You just set it up. But at least you've got your website connected to your Google Analytics and your webmaster tools. So. We've got that very important foundational stuff set up. And as we let this run, when we come back next week, you know, we'll, we'll look at these screens, reporting and customization, all of that stuff. But we needed to set up our connection between our sites. So eventually, when this is fully set up, when it's made the connection and it's worked, that screen there will say collecting data, I think. It's going to say that, yes, you've got the connection. Google is collecting data of your traffic, and we'll see the traffic and so forth later. Right now, I don't really get any feedback. It's kind of weird. Uh, Anal uh, Webmaster Tools definitely gives us the screen that says congratulations. But Analytics doesn't. You just have to trust me that eventually it'll work now. Mine says not tracking, but again, I'm not worried. I just set it up. So eventually this will work. Any questions on analytics? It'll make more sense and it'll be useful once we fully have it set up for a little while. Yes. This process we, we will do very similar now with Bing. We need to create a free Bing account and then it'll tell us use this code on your website. So we're gonna, it's going to give us that code and we're going to plug it in again into tools, available tools, right here. We set up the Google Webmaster Tools, now we need the Bing Webmaster Tools. And it'll be more statistics that we will get now from Bing. The difference with Bing is that here, most likely, you'll need to create a new account. Who has a Hotmail email account? MSN. MSN, yeah, that'll work also. If you've got hot look, uh, Hotmail or Outlook or MSN, that'll work. But let's, let's go here. Bing.com slash toolbox. B-I-N-G dot com slash toolbox. So here it's saying uh, sign in or sign up. If you've got already a Hotmail account or Outlook or MSN or any one of those, you should it should let you sign in. If you don't have one, you'll 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 need to create one and it's free. And I believe you can use your existing email if you just want to keep using your Gmail or whatever you have. You can you can use it. So I'm going to look at this for a moment. Sign up for one. So it's going to ask you create one. 
or notice it will say use your favorite email so if you don't want to make a brand new email that's fine use your Gmail but you take a moment to either sign in or or create an account and then we will proceed because see you next time because we'll need to we'll need to log into this so either way you do it either sign in or sign up so we can use the the uh, one from Hotmail said, right? Gmail? Gmail? Yeah, Hotmail. Hotmail works. If you have, do you have a Hotmail account already? Yeah. yeah. So you can do it. Instead of creating one, just go back and in, instead select sign in. Well, if you've already got Hotmail or MSN, you can just click sign in. If you don't have one, you can just create a new account and use your existing email. Take a moment to, to sign in or sign up and then we'll proceed. Again, mine will look a little bit different because I've already got it set. create two separate accounts, you can just use your existing Gmail or whatever you have. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. So whichever you want to put in your account, it's just your existing one. Okay. Use your existing one and fill out the rest real quick and just like sign up to do. You can you can just pick a date. Send an email to your Gmail, and then from there you confirm that. Now, as we all, I'll just wait for everyone to get to the screen, but your screen is empty because you haven't set up a site. We'll do it right now, but eventually your screen will be populated like mine here. Again, I work with a variety of clients, so it's got some data here. Uh, I'll explain what the data means once we've got it set up next week so that it can start to gather data. But this will show you how many clicks you got, how many people found your site, uh, how many site, how many pages were, were browsed, all of that cool stuff. Uh, we just need to set up the account. Mine has websites, yours is empty, but do you see, do you have a button that says add site? Or how does yours look actually? Here we, are, we have to add the site, right? Yeah, click Add Site. So then, uh, let me see. Uh, you want to add the... You want to add the your website. Again, we'll do it the same way. www. The name of your site. Yeah, my screen might look a little different than yours, but 
you type in the name of your site. Now yours is going to ask you for more information, so you do want to right there. Anything that's required for you, but if it's not required, you can skip it. So you can the website of your site. If it asks you for any in, any more information, uh, only fill out the ones that are required. If it asks for phone number or whatever, you can skip that. But mine is showing me this, and I guess it's not the same as some people, but it's going to ask you at least your website and then a site map. Wait a minute, I do have a site map. I can use the same site map that I use for Google. There's no conflict there. So if you're on the screen about adding your website, add your sitemap too. So I still have my sitemap open over here on my other browser. If you don't have your sitemap open, you can get back to it from your website under SEO. Go back to your website, SEO, and then there it is, XML sitemaps. And then you'll have the button. Uh, you can find your XML sitemap here. Click on that, and there's your address again for your sitemap. You see, I've got my sitemap. So copy that address. And as I go back to my Bing setup, OK, I've got my website address, and I'll paste my sitemap address. This one is the complete address. And then I might ask you, when do you receive the most traffic? This is just, um, you can control, because Google and Bing are going to be checking on your website once in a while. And it may be in the middle of the day, it may be at night, it may be at noon, who knows. But here you can tell it, well, my most popular time of, my, of the day of my site is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't visit my site that often because I've got real traffic but I don't know what my most popular times are, so it's okay not to fill that in. So all I'm filling in here is my website and my sitemap, so select Add. It wants you to verify, just like we did with Google, and it's got three ways. Upload a file, copy some code, or go with GoDaddy. We'll do the same thing here. Yes. You, uh, you are in Bing now? I'm you, still in Bing, yes. But you, you just save that and that is the next, yeah. the next one? So I'm going to copy that line of code here that it's asking just like Google was telling me to verify. So I'm going to copy that line. I'm going to go back to my website. Remember under settings, or where was it? No, under tools, available tools. And there's a spot there, Bing Webmaster Tools. Paste your code. Paste it, save it, go back to Bing and select verify. So then if you verified that, it's going to take you back here. If it didn't work, it'll give you a big red X. But if it did work, it will just take you back here. So I'm, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't have to copy this one. Mm -hmm. Copy it again. Back to it. Mm -hmm. to right here. Where? We'll remember that screen where it showed your, your Google verification on your tool. So this procedure was very similar to Google, wasn't it? Just slightly different screens and so forth. We added our sitemap, we added our, our site, we verified it. If it did not work, it would give you a big red X. If it did work, it doesn't give you congratulations. It just dumps you here where our statistics will start to show up. And that's good enough. 
So we, we, today we've set up our Google Analytics, um, Google Webmaster Tools, and Bing Webmaster Tools, also their analytics, same thing. Google has two separate names, Google Webmaster Tools, Google Analytics, but Bing just has one name, Google Webmaster Tools. That's going to be both. So if you got that set up, great. If not, we'll do lab time very soon, and then I'll help you out. But we set up those two webmaster tools in order to track our data. Any general questions there? Why is it two-step? You mean the verification? Yeah. Why, do, why, why is it necessary to, to, um, to add two codes? with Google, right? There was the Google verification for webmaster tools and the Google verification for analytics. Is that what you mean? Yeah, because the webmaster tools verification is just to verify you have ownership. The analytics code is for it to track all of your traffic. And Google at the moment has them separate. That's just the way it is. The short answer is that's just the way it is. Google set it up that way. Bing, because they are trying to catch up with Google, they made it a little easier and it's just one code. 